Uh, thanks everyone. And okay, so we all have dreams from our childhood, and I had one such dream to travel. And this came to travel to United Kingdom. And this came in my history lessons when my teachers were telling me about how Britishers used to, uh, how Britishers came to India, how Europeans came to India, and Persians came to India. And I asked my teacher, did we ever go? And that was a seed that was sown in my uh, in very early stage of my life. And as we grow older, as I grew older, I realized dreams and realities are completely two different things. And I start believing that I cannot pursue my dreams. For some reason, we start hearing a lot of negativity in the air, the lot of negativity in uh, people around us, or maybe it's just because the way we are brought up. And coming from a typical South Indian family, for me it was just uh, engineering, getting a master's in, in a foreign country and then getting a job. That's what I did as well. And after a while, I spoke to myself saying, I have one life and I want to do, probably I will try, do my best to pursue my dream and see where it goes. So I took a job and decided to plan decided to travel from India, all, uh, so, uh, Australia, all the way to uh, UK. And then I traveled about 18 months, like a typical backpacker, to Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, and I came to India. India was my halfway mark. From, from India, it was another journey that's going to begin uh, this year. So when I came to India, I have noticed one of the interesting pictures. This picture, actually I am not trying to hide a face intentionally, it is the common face that you actually see nowadays. And this picture actually asked me, I asked myself why is this beautiful, why can't I see this beautiful girl? And your yeah, boys being boys, I have realized it is a pollution and what I can do for my next trip to make some change. And then in few days from then, I saw these things. You cannot, you cannot not notice them in India. They are loud, they are smoky and they are everywhere. And there is some Indianness in them. We have all been brought up in this tuk tuk. So while asking myself questions, how I should change my direction of traveling, still pursuing my dream to go to UK and doing something, some positive change for the society, I have decided that I will travel in a solar auto rickshaw that I will build. So I call it a zero emission tuk tuk travel. And I would be traveling all the way from Bangalore to London. So this is all good, you know, dreams, you, you put it on a PPT, you write it down, it's all fine. But the moment you enter the next stage that is what I call is a build phase and that's where the real problem starts and that's where your character gets tested you know till now life was very comfortable but when you enter that build phase your fear starts piling up and you feel you have fears of insecurity of your losing of rejection of society and you have a fear of your career all these things start up pile up but for some reason, you always try to be more positive because you find people around you who are positive as well. Yes, you do find people who are negative or you can, you know, they ask you a lot of questions which are not relevant to your dream which, because they are not understanding your dream. But if you start living in those, if you are trying to answer those questions, you are never going to pursue your dream. One such, ex two, there are two examples like people often ask, when I started this dream, uh, this tuk tuk travel, they asked me, I think you are on drugs. They straight away say that I am on drugs. Okay, fine. And the second set of people, they asked me, what after this? What after you go to London? For them, I just tell them that, no, this is my dream. That's it. There is no, no material gain out of it, though no financial gain that I am hoping to get out of it. So it is, you know, for, it's very hard for a lot of people for us to Visualize, realize that you know we think it's always time versus dream, or can be time versus dream as well. 
people you can follow your dream and that's what I would like to do and I tell them. So how you have these kind of people who always ask you questions and you pile up these fears in you because you know when I started I didn't have any financial backup or I didn't have any uh, technical know-how or knowledge. So these things add up and you start asking, doubting yourself. So one, but you know, you, there are also other set of people who actually believe in your dream and universe works in, I believe in universe which works in mysterious ways and somehow when you start pursuing this dream, you find these people getting closer and closer. You only meet these kind of people who are actually supporting you. One such, uh, one such example was this mechanic when I first bought my tuk tuk. So uh, I bought an old auto rickshaw. It's a very, it was a very crappy one and I got it and I didn't know any, anything about how a, gearbox work, how a gearbox works or how an engine works. So I hired this mechanic Mola to come to my garage and help me to understand how to unmount it and how to uh, and explain how these things works. I, he charged me and while he was leaving the garage he asked me Naveen, what are you doing with this uh, old piece of tuk tuk? I told him about my dream. He immediately said, Naveen, next time if you have any problem, if you have any issues with this tuk tuk, please call me and I won't charge you. And there and then I realized, you know, I, my dream started, I started sharing my dream with others and slowly a team got formed. And it just didn't happen over a period of you know, it just didn't happen just like that. It happened over a period of time. And that is the second important lesson that I learned is patience and persistence. And you know, when you're in this path, again, I would say universe, again, it conspires you and it teaches you lessons from something. Uh, by the way, this is my garage, actually. <laughs> Very, it's like a Jugard garage that we have. Uh, so, and you meet some very interesting people. We worked throughout nights. We failed. We don't know anything. We had hardly, we don't even have a jack. You see, see this, uh, see these things? We don't have a jack. We use that as to lift the vehicle up. So, going back about patience and persistence. You learn these lessons from some of the oddest places that you ever don't expect. You'd never expect from this. So I was, uh, during that time I was teaching badminton to young kids to support myself financially and these are the kids whom I used to teach badminton and this is girl, Kritika, who taught me a very important lesson that I was calling about patience and persistence. She, she had trouble with her motor controls. She was six years old and it was very hard for her to touch the shuttle. So, my job was just to throw shuttles at her and ask her to touch, ask her to hit it back. It took me six weeks, six weeks and probably thousand shuttles. And one, one day, we, which was not expected at all, she actually hit it, hit it past me. And that very moment, we both stared at each other and we knew what happened. And she jumped, she jumped with joy. And I congratulated her and that was the lesson she gave me. She took six weeks, lots of hours, at least probably 24 hours of practice and 1,000 schedules and she's a small six-year-old girl. So we think that, you know, this generation, in my generation, we feel that answers should come in a click of a button, but it takes time. What I realize, it takes time. It takes a lot of persistence. And that's the lesson that you learn, I learned. And with now, I'm in a stage where we have built the vehicle. And, and we have tested it around, we are going to places, to villages, to schools, to universities, sometimes invited, sometimes uninvited. We go and we share our story with these people and we try to learn from them, we try to uh, tell them what we have learned. In such, in one such incident, we went to, I went to a few months ago, I went to a school in Delhi and the kids absolutely loved it. They have, they have not seen such things before. And after giving a presentation, a small workshop for the kids, how solar things work and how my, about my, telling about my story and stuff, one father comes to me and he says, 
Naveen, you know what? My son till now was wanting a Lamborghini, but now he wants a solar car. He thinks it's better for his future. So that is what we want to do. That is what I want to do to help with my journey is to inspire younger generation to believe in their dreams and to pursue them. Thank you.